Over the past several years, Georgia farmers have seen the emergence of a weed they cannot seem to kill. The pest has caused producers a lot of money to fight and in some cases has wiped out entire crops. The Monitor's Mark Wildman visited with one UGA weed specialist who is hard at work trying to find a solution. Weeds are never a welcome sight in any row crop operation, but this weed is especially despised. It is called Palmer amaranth and it has been a devastating problem for producers. Over the years, producers have been battling weeds with a chemical called glyphosate, which is found in Roundup. But this weed has developed a resistance to the glyphosate, leaving producers with a big problem. It is without a doubt the, the largest pest management problem that any of our agronomic growers are facing, especially our cotton producers. Uh, we've now confirmed it in 52 counties, well over a million acres of land, and it continues to spread rapidly. Here in a research plot, Dr. Stanley Culpepper is trying to figure out a method Georgia producers can use to fight this pest. We're essentially looking at everything I think you could dream of. We're developing the weed management programs. We're working very aggressively with these integrated programs. We're implementing cover crops into production systems. We're implementing deep turning into production systems. Uh, and, and we're again continuing to evaluate the, the, the herbicides that we've got out today because again, the, the key is the integration, it's the diversity. We need a herbicide program. We have to be timely with that herbicide program, but we need help from other uh, management practices. Right over to my left, we're, we're looking at technology that won't be out till 2015 or 16. The dicamba resistant cotton, we're working hard with it. 2,4-D resistant cotton. So there's a lot of new technology that will help us greatly in the management of palmer amaranth. Over the past few years, this weed has spread. And if you think just pulling it is the answer, think again. Just a little bit of handling of this weed drops about 25,000 seeds and can spread a few miles in a hurry. In 2004, we first confirmed resistance, and we felt like in 2004 we had it on about 500 acres in one or two counties. Um, so now it's 2010, we've got it in 52 counties and well over a million acres. So as far as spread, I don't know that we've ever seen any weed pests spread like this. Researchers who are studying this weed problem say every farmer should have a strict weed management program because if you do not have a glyphosate resistant problem now, eventually you will. Growers, depending on where you're at and what your production practices are, growers can develop different integrated approaches, but it's got to include uh, parts of the program other than just herbicides. We've been so lucky for, for many years now, especially the last 10 years, we've been able to rely heavily on herbicides, very economical, uh, very friendly, very effective, but, but now we're, we're having to develop integrated type programs where we either use tillage in some production systems or we use heavy cover crop residues in some production systems. But the key is diversity and integration, and, and I think everybody has to become far more timely than we've been in the last 10 years or so. One of the unique characteristics of this weed is that it produces a male and female plant and that can unload millions and millions of new weeds very quickly. You have a male plant that produces pollen and you have a female plant that produces seed. So that pollen travels significant distances. We have through research d documented a quarter mile to a half a mile where it, that pollen can carry that resistant trait with it. So if you've got grower A who has resistance in his field and the pollen is leaving his field and you've got grower B who doesn't have resistance, if that pollen moves over and pollinates that female plant, even though she's sensitive in grower B's field, uh, the progeny will contain resistance. Right now the weed situation looks bleak, but don't worry because there's research underway at UGA to turn fields like this into fields like this. Reporting from Tifton, I'm Mark Wildman for the Georgia Farm Monitor.